All right. Good afternoon, Mike. We are live. How are you today, buddy? How are you? Good. Good. Good, 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 good. So yesterday I asked you what we should do today. You sent me over a great article that I perused, I think, last week when it came out. Um, it's an article from Mark Sisson or an email from Mark Sisson. His stuff is amazing. Um, and he sent out an elaborate email talking about gut bacteria. And the, the headline was gut bacteria do more than you think. So we figured we would just go through those seven and comment a little bit about them. And then for you to encourage you guys to subscribe to Mark's Daily Apple. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Is that, a, yeah. is that what, that's what it's called, right? Mark's Daily Apple, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right. You ready? Let's roll. Okay. Number one, they can learn from each other. Yeah, this is, this is fascinating. Uh, what he talked about was uh, there's, a, there's an exchange of genetic material. Uh, with other bacteria in the gut, which is which is just fascinating to um, apply and understand. So this yeah. is really, really, really deep and really interesting. Yeah, they this one too. They always use the example of of uh, in Asian countries where they eat a lot of seaweed. Well, on the seaweed is a bacteria that when you consume the seaweed, that that bacteria teaches our bacteria how to digest that seaweed. So it's just really amazing. Absolutely. Uh, number two is something that I, I never knew that was pretty interesting. Uh, they help they help our bones. Yeah, this was really interesting to me too, because this is not really something that I can say I've learned. So, you know, this is always, there's always an opportunity to learn. Um, and this was new to me too. And both of us with multiple certifications in functional medicine, really studying uh, diet and nutrition, brand new material to me. Yeah. I mean, to think that your gut bacteria helps with bone density um, yep. and bone strength and bone, bone pliability was, was, was amazing. Yeah. What he said was um, when you feed the gut bacteria fermentable fiber, um, give people a couple examples of fermentable fiber. Uh, fermentable fiber could be anything from like, I don't know, from plantains yep. to potato starch, potato starch. That's to, right. There's, there's other ones too, but those, yep. those are two that, I, and there's other more elaborate ones and more, um, ones probably made in a lab or kind of processed ones but the two that come to mind most commonly would be potato starch and plantains and then also cooked and cooled potatoes cooked and, and cooked, cooled is a big one yeah and cooked and cooled rice as well yes both of those absolutely uh, number three uh they counteract anti-nutrients yeah this is fascinating they um they're able uh vegetables and fruits have what are called phytic acid. It's an anti-nutrient that binds uh, and prevents absorption of certain minerals. It's a, basically a, a self-defense kind of thing. Um, and they're able to counteract that. So that's important. Uh, very, very important. If you, if, you don't, if you consume too many anti-nutrients that are viable and not broken down, um, your body can absorb things like iron and zinc and all these different things. And it just really, um, it, it could become a problem. That's why some people, um, you know, are really bullish on what kind of plant and plant material you eat. Yeah. I want, just wanted to take one second on this. Uh, we got some time. Sure. So what it does, the, the gut bacteria, it, it, uh, the, the gut bacteria turn phytic acid into inositol. <laughs> now, Andrew Huberman says you can take inositol, just as an aside, you can take inositol at night to help you sleep. And what it does is helps the brain stop racing. For people who are uh, forward thinkers, these are usually folks that have um, some anxiety. And by taking inositol at night before you go to bed, it stops your brain from, from racing. Now, this is really interesting is that the body 
the, the good gut bacteria turn this phytic acid into inositol. So I find this really interesting. This is such a good article that, that uh, Sisson put out. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I agree totally. Uh, number four, and we, we've heard this before. Yep. Um, our gut bacteria make certain vitamins like certain B vitamins and vitamin K, K2. So, um, you know, without proper gut bacteria, you're not going to produce the right vitamins and nutrients that you need. You know, it's it's always interesting to me is that things that we need aren't oh, don't always come from what we eat. They come from what our body actually produces, which is amazing. Right. Right. Absolutely. Pretty straightforward. Yep. Number five, this was another interesting one. They guard against pathogens. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you would think, yeah, of course, that makes sense. But again, one of those things that really uh, I haven't heard much about, but it's it's really um, something that 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 good gut bacteria do. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense if if you if you consume or ingest some sort of virus or bacteria or, or parasite, if you're, you know, if your gut bacteria is in check, most cases it probably can defend itself. It's always when you, you know, when we're down and our immune system is down, which is housed in our gut is when those things take over and, 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 and cause us illness. Now what's the next one? Number six. And we also heard this too. It's still fascinating. Every time you say it, they make up a second brain. Absolutely. This is one of the big ones that really came to the forefront with the, you know, like Noah, you've been fermenting foods for years. Um, and, and this is one of the things that we've said in our lectures as well. It acts as a second brain. So not everything is produced in the brain, but uh, can be produced by these gut bacteria. And then number seven is mind blowing, especially the last word. Uh, uh, the, our gut bacteria can make us anxious. We talked a little bit about that. It can make us depressed, obsessive compulsive, and even autistic. Whoa. <laughs> they, they found in, in the research, and it's really the lack of the, um, the good bacteria. What they find is in, in folks that have these conditions, um, the lack of the positive bacteria in the gut. So it's, it's fascinating work. Yeah, this goes back to the second brain. You know, our, our gut bacteria, they, they generate, produce a lot of our neurotransmitters. Our, most of our neurotransmitters aren't created in our brain. They're created in our gut. Then they travel up the vagus nerve into our brain. So if you're not creating the right neurotransmitters in your gut yes. from this gut bacteria, and then the right ones aren't getting up to your noggin, you could see how you could become anxious, depressed, obsessive compulsive, or even have autistic tendencies. I mean, it's just like, it's just totally mind blowing. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. You know, and, and when we first started doing these lectures back in 2008, 2007, um, we, we were made aware of introducing probiotics to your diet uh, and what we, it was only one half of the equation because you, you, you have to feed then, you can seed your gut with the probiotics, but you then have to feed them. And this is where a lot of the research has gone into feeding the uh, probiotics to, to help them stay, stay healthy. Yeah, because mo a lot of them, and you know this, Mike, are transient. They go in, they do the job, right. and they leave. Well, you want some right. to stay, and for yeah. the way to get them to stay is, is as we talked about a little while, is fermentable fibers and, and yep. so on and so forth, and constantly eating probiotic foods and fermented foods and yeah. and um, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and all those kind of things. Yeah, but it's it's not a it's not a one time deal. It's something that you have to incorporate into your lifestyle where you're eating this regularly. Yeah, and, and um, Rob Wolf talks about this all the time where um, your gut bacteria changes minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day by what you eat, what you think, uh, yeah. what how you worked out the day before, how you slept the day before. So it, it, the, the science is it, it's so rapidly changing that it's, it's just neat to see and it's neat that we have a better understanding. 
Yeah, I actually thought of you when when he when he said that, and he said, you know, even watching a scary movie, and I know you and Kellen are watching oh, uh, yes. a couple scary uh, series, and yep. uh, it, it can change just just by that. So really interesting. It is well, great one, Mike. Thanks for sharing with me, so we could share with everybody. Um, August thirtieth, we're doing an interview with uh, Mike Stanloff from Stanloff Fitness, and we'll be right back here again on Tuesday. And as always, uh, we're open from three to six, fully staffed today. Bye, guys.